Another bright and sunny day at Angry Girl's house. <laughs> that is very specific, but they love it. When you love someone, you know, all their quirks are just great. He wants me to hit him with a carpet beater? <laughs> He's so hardworking and dedicated. It would be an honor. <laughs> this is for the greater good. We gotta beat him sen senseless. We gotta fulfill his carpet beating fantasies. Oh yeah, I'm a dirty carpet. <laughs> I want you to beat me like one of your carpets, said no one ever except for Tanjiro. What kind of, uh, carpet are we talking about here? Polyester? Wool? Persian? Episode 25, Tsugoko, Kanao Tsuyuri. I'm sure they'll be happy to oblige your carpet beating fantasies. This is asking a lot from himself, but that's our Tanjiro. <laughs> no. I feel bad for Inosuke and Sensei too. <laughs> I think they're sleep disturbed. They're grown teenagers. They can make their own lives. Man, if that isn't life, though. I can barely do normal breathing while doing 20 push ups, so that's impressive. Great talk. <laughs> Great. I'm glad we had this conversation. Oh, I see. We're talking through our bodies. And screams. Something inside of her that we have yet to unlock. What is the secret to her power? Ah, uh, no, but sometimes you think that. It just means the other person is, like, taking it easy. Because they don't need to do extra work. If you're really smart, you can serve energy. Just to the point where you can ensure a victory. To do anything more than that would be to rub it in. What have they been doing? Childish things. I love how much they like him. Hey, he got it! And he deserves it. <laughs> They're so excited for his success. Wow, that was a huge jump up in difficulty. Soak in the regret. If you had only worked harder, you two could be blowing in gourds. You fools. I'm surprised they haven't been kicked out yet. But you know what? I sort of like that. Like, there's no time to be enforcing things on them. If they don't want to be there, then they shouldn't be there. The stakes are too high. You can't fake it. Look at Tanjiro, right? Like, you can't fake that level of work and dedication. And also, I think that weirdly, but I guess in a way that makes sense, the result of this is often to the student's benefit. Like, one of two things is going to happen. They're going to drop off, which means there's probably something that wasn't aligned there anyway. Or they're going to be observing this and do the amount of introspection they need to do to find whatever's missing in their conceptualization that makes them want to work hard so that they're actually showing up in a way that is meaningful to them so that they can do the hard work that Tanjiro is doing. I always sort of resent it as a student, especially an adult student, people not giving me that sort of leeway to figure things out for myself and figure out my own level of involvement. Things like attendance policies and busy work in school. It's like there really is no utility to any of those things, at least related to the goal of education, if my heart isn't there. Like, you know, I'll show up or not, as the case often was. But the things I really wanted to do, I did without being asked, if that makes sense. Zenitsu or Inosuke showing up and like being inspired by Tanjiro, like genuinely organically inspired by him and working hard would feel so much better than some overarching force pressuring them by the neck to follow some sort of procedure or standards. You can do a lot just by showing up, honestly. The perfect is the enemy of the good and all that. You don't need to be Tanjiro to make a lot of progress. Sparrow is tired of your crap. Well, if you can't make it in the Demon Slayers, you always have work as a bird interpreter, <laughs> I guess. Well, someone brought their abs this morning. There you go. Listen to the man, Monitsu. Yeah, that's a good teacher. Like, oh, you want to learn? Here I am. No judgment. You want to train? We train. You don't want to train? It's your loss. I like it. That's <laughs> so far ahead. His goal is all day instead of like the five seconds they're trying to muster. It's such a simple thing, but this thing's so beautiful in that. Like, it's true some of the, the greatest and most important things. I mean, just living, right? Like, living is pretty simple. <laughs> like, everyone who's alive does it, to some degree at least. But mastering it, that's a, a different story. You know, I was actually thinking about the breath 
today as I was walking because as I've been alluding to multiple times over the last six months, nine months, whatever it's been, there have been some areas of my life that have not been properly maintained. Let's put it that way. And I don't have super huge regrets just because I feel like all of them revealed things I needed to learn. But then just, you know, taking stock of things in sort of a low, lowish moment because I've oriented myself so heavily towards a certain thing that is kind of outside of my control. My self-conceptualization and the way I regard the success of my life has sort of been skewed. And some of the things that are really great about my life, I've kind of like not been able to fully appreciate just because of how all consuming my focus has been on something that is not those things. And I was just asking myself like, well, what are the things I can think about that would give me emotional utility, right? Like let's reflect and think about the, the stuff that's good. And I'm so lucky, like there's just so many great things in my life that I can point to. Nothing of value has truly been lost. But in thinking about that, it sort of dawned on me that I was looking a little bit too far out and that the only real value, strong value I could derive for myself in that moment would come from going back to the basics. It would come from reforging sort of the bond I had with myself, the vision I had of my future, the principles I once wanted to hold myself to that I had somewhat put on the back shelf in pursuit of a selfish desire. And it wasn't immediately gratifying to have that thought, but it did feel right to me. And I realized it would be a process of like having to regrow those things because those things were of value and I let them sort of wither by not attending to them. And the really cool thing about that is that that can be a process I follow no matter what I decide to do, no matter how things play out circumstantially. It's mostly a focus thing, like Tanjiro's breathing. It's constant attention to one's own regulation. He was meditating in the previous episode, and that's perfect because meditation, as I understand it, is not necessarily a spiritual practice as much as it is a way of realizing that we have more ability to be cognizant of our own internal state than is immediately obvious. You know, we treat emotions as things that are there and are volatile and we're just sort of along for the ride. And there is some truth to that, but the more one is able to like practice looking at one's state, looking at one's emotions and take a bird's eye view on them, the less sort of power and sway they have and the more one can sort of cultivate what one wants to think, what, what one wants to be to make those stronger, to sort of fill that space in a healthier way. And it is really difficult. Like it's so simple, but it's so difficult. It's a lifelong dedication, probably. But I do know from experience, and this makes me optimistic, that it doesn't really take that long to start seeing effects. And just like this exercise, it gets to the point where certain things become automatic or near automatic to the point where you can shift energy to whatever the next thing is. I thought that was going to be an insult at first, but then it turned into an insult, a different kind of insult. And that spoke directly to his psyche. That is wholly uncalled for and unnecessary. I see, so she also reads characters. <laughs> that was simple and easy. Nothing difficult about inspiring these two. Challenge and... Charm. Female charm. Great talk. Glad we had this conversation. She seems like the kind of girl who breathes healthily, if you know what I mean. But it just feels better together, right? Like the three of them are stronger and complement each other better than they would individually. Okay, <laughs> I feel like the consequences of that coin flip may be grave. Yikes. Another family forging these bonds. Oh, this is a flashback. This is her. Akito's bond was broken. The curse was lifted. But also, you can never turn into a chicken again. Remember when I said I wanted speaking lines? About that. Oh, it's not a flashback. I'm so confused. It is a flashback. Sorry, I'm confused because there's so many characters that are butterfly affiliated with purple eyes. There's... Shocho, angry girl with a smile. There's Butterfly Lady 2, and then there's Demon Slayer Trainee, whose flashback this is. No, pick it up. <laughs> exactly. This guy en ends up on his knees, scooping up money where he belongs. Can you even trust it? Can you trust the kindness after all that? Oh, is this- is that where this is going? I had a suspicion that this might be a love interest for Tanjiro. But then again, Shinsuke and those abs. You never know which way the wind will flow. <laughs> oh no, it's time to go off to your deaths again. I have some bad news. Oh, oh, it's actually good news. 
I'm so conditioned to fear these crows. I wouldn't button my shirt either if I had apps like that. Is he actually going to be angry, like Tanjiro predicted? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah. Tanjiro was right. I was wrong. He does care. <laughs> I mean, the man is dedicated to his craft. He had to be there. You should have seen what he did with that the little tiny stub. He lit a fire that raged in all of our hearts. So you're the sick genius behind the those crazy blades. These are a lot more straight. Less violent looking. Oh, they're blue. Pretty cool. Is he going to chip them? Yeah. Yeah, it's not, it's not violent enough for him. And the other one. Look, well, Inosuke is going to be Inosuke. The man knows who he is and what he wants. It's time for your carpet beating. Your nightly... Oh, maybe not. I wonder if they don't feel a little bit disappointed they don't get to do their nightly carpet beating. Oh, he, he did it! <laughs> I was thinking that. It's sort of a weird and aggressive thing to do. That was a very good way of handling it. It proves ability, but also spared her wetness. And so Tanjiro, without any pressure, without any scolding, just by being great, lifted up everyone around him. It's awesome. Do we finally learn the secret of why we're throwing tea in people's faces? Is there a more specific reason than just like agility, dexterity? So there are answers to more things than just reverting demons to humans that we're looking for now. Oh no, we are not going to get along. I'm having trauma-induced flashbacks of reading comments about wind bending. It's true, it is legit convincing that he's grown a lot, even with the sort of bizarre activities. Yeah, she means that too. She might even see like some of her salvation in Tanjiro, something she feels like she can't quite do herself. Once again, Tanjiro is behind them but ahead of them simultaneously. It's okay, she awakens when the plot demands it. A little, yeah. <laughs> That's so awesome. There's something about this whole experience that just feels like a journey into adulthood. You know what I mean? Right, let's not, not forget about our fetch quest. Oh my god! Wait, but how did she say that through the muzzle? Is she a telepath? Maybe Tanjo has been breathing a little bit too hard. A little too much oxygen to the brain, perhaps. What Tanjiro has done in these episodes, while I think simple on the surface, to me is surprisingly moving and inspiring. I mean, taking the breath as a metaphor for like focus or maybe internal regulation, discipline towards achieving a state of being or thinking or whatever, something in that general category. I could ask the question, how many people do that? But then I could ask maybe a crazier question, which is how many people are even aware that they can do that? There's a lesson I keep having to learn, and I guess that means I haven't quite learned it yet, but just logically, it seems like the things that should be focused on the most are the things that have the deepest and most base or root impacts. So like striving for some kind of self-understanding and regulation, emotional understanding, impulse control, and having the humility to start from the basics like that will almost certainly bring positive results to everything else that is at a more superficial or more outside layer than those things. But for some reason, those are way harder to focus on. Maybe because they're more challenging. Like I was saying in the Mob Psycho reactions recently, in order to fill unmet needs or like burning desires people have, we reach for things that will circumstantially patch that hole or provide some kind of relief no matter how temporary it is. And you know, there are common things like money and relationships, braggable accomplishments, things like that. And it's hard to learn that lesson, even though it's staring us right in the face that people who have everything, you know, people who are rich, powerful, good-looking, successful, have no monopoly on happiness, and in fact can be quite miserable. Yet despite the abundance of evidence, that is the thing that is most 
commonly sought after in regards to making ourselves feel better about our lives. And it's weird, right? It's like, why? Why is that? And the only answer I can come up with is that actually it's easier. Like actually those things, even money, fame, as hard as those are, are maybe easier than doing what Tanjiro is doing. It may be easier than emotional regulation and total self-mastery control because those things take pain and unbelievable superhuman levels of dedication that require real connectedness to one's own life and one's goals and to oneself more importantly and saying it out loud it, it runs the risk of being this cliche thing like believe in yourself focus on yourself whatever but the more i do this the more i realize that the cliche things are only cliche because they're not deeply understood and the more deeply understood they are the more correct they become and i feel like that is absolutely correct like it's the fundamentals of oneself that will be the most powerful and will likely lead to success in the circumstantial things but will also make them sort of irrelevant it all stems from the breath And we got a train. I've been hearing about a train arc. I see this train went to the Resident Evil School of Trains. He looks friendly. Tanjiro is so excited to get out in the world again, and this is what's waiting for him. You know what? <laughs> These ending scenes are sort of the spiritual brother or sister of Attack on Titan's mid cards. Instead of like cookies or soup or horse, it's math tea. Okay, so that training arc was not the training arc I expected, but it was one I I loved. The show is is two out of two for really unique and novel, but really great training arcs. Both the Boulder arc and this arc have been some of my favorite episodes. I feel like they have some of the most depth because they go beyond just the physical power and you know work really hard and drill these things into you and go to something a little bit more fundamental, a little bit more spiritual. I mean, Tanjiro's focus on the breath is just excellent, and I love that he pulled up Inusuke and. Zenitsu without any force, right? Like just seeing Tanjiro working that hard was enough to inspire them. That's, I feel, how it should be. And speaking of which, it's two out of two for teachers sort of trusting their students to do the right thing and letting them make the choices for themselves. That's something you don't see a lot in life. Back to Inusuke and Zenitsu. The fact that they didn't match up to Tanjiro's level actually is okay. And I think the outcome is great. I think because of how daunting it is, because of how daunting these huge you know, personal tasks are often step one isn't even taken, right? But as I said, you know, one of my life's mottos is the perfect is the enemy of the good. Because at this point, I sort of accepted that there are a lot of areas in my life where I'll never be great. It's just sort of built in. I mean, it's possible, but it would be going against the current or natural flow of who I am in life. But that doesn't mean I can't be good. You know, it doesn't mean I can't do better. It doesn't mean I can't grow. And so I think the letting oneself off of the hook of that, of being the best ever or being an ultimate realized form, maybe Maybe is somewhat unsatisfying and maybe isn't the top level of heroism, but it's a hell of a lot better than sitting in bed. Getting out there and doing stuff is way more satisfying and actually gives you a chance at greatness. You know, it gives you a foot in the door with which you, you might actually find that you can be as great as Tanjiro. Like you might actually find that there are areas where, no, you can crush it. You can get to the total full concentration breathing or whatever. Maybe it'll take Zenitsu and Inusuke 20 years. Maybe they'll never get there, but they're going to be awesome. I mean, they're already awesome. And they probably will have their own ways in which they will be at Tanjiro-like levels just based on their natural inclinations and who they really are. So it's just really good stuff all around. And there's like no, no negativity in it, if you know what I mean. It's like, it feels right. It feels pure and it feels good. And it's sort of what I want to emulate.